Welcome to our channel Sankalp Study Success. Today in this video we are going to learn about a new chapter which is the 5th unit which is nothing but types of Turing machine. Here first let us discuss what is a Turing machine and then let us go into the types of Turing machine here. So coming to the Turing machine. Turing machine is nothing but previously you have seen finite automaton. You have also seen pushdown automaton right. This finite automata was used to accept regular languages and this pushdown automata was accepting context free languages. Correct. So now this Turing machine is going to accept recursively enumerable languages. So which is nothing but it is recursively enumerable languages. So in order to accept this recursively enumerable languages we have a machine called as Turing machine. So this machine we are having different types of this Turing machine where now let us discuss some of the types of Turing machine in this chapter where this, this is the most important question for our external exam for long answer questions you may get it for long answer that is either for 5 marks or for 10 marks. So let us concentrate here. In the first one is the multi tape Turing machine. Second is the non deterministic Turing machine. It is a semi infinite Turing machine and the infinite Turing machine. Then comes multi dimensional Turing machine and multi stack Turing machine and the counter machine. So now let us discuss one by one in detail. So coming to the multi tape Turing machine which is the first one. If you see carefully in the multi tape Turing machine you are going to have again two types which is single head Turing machine and the multi head Turing machine. That means for any Turing machine you are going to have three parts where first one is the head that means it is a finite control then the second one is the input tape. So the second one is the input tape finite control and then third one is you are going to have left or right read right head okay so you are going to move from either left to right or you can also move from either right to left so here in the multi tape turing machine we are again having two types which are single head and multi head multi tape turing machines so now first let us see the diagram and then we'll come back here here if you see there are, these are the input tapes these are nothing but input tapes where these input tapes consist of the input strings where you are processing those input strings okay so recursively enumerable language we are going to accept this recursively enumerable language using Turing machine correct so this recursively enumerable languages are nothing but some set of strings so and the manam e set of strings anit we accept out on the accept avat leda and it's a uh, is nothing but we are just using turing machine for this so coming here this set of string is nothing but the input to your input tape correct so this input tape consists of your input string consists of input string if you carefully observe your input tape is infinite towards the left and also it is infinite towards the right and this is the one input tape this is the second input tape and this is the third input tape and so on that means what you are having multiple tapes correct so which is nothing but it is a multi tape turing machine so here again we are having a finite control what is this finite control finite control is used to point out to the head of your input string that means it is pointing to this alphabet and here it is pointing to this alphabet here it is pointing to this alphabet that means what for each and every string it is pointing to one head at least correct so that means it is a multi tape multi head turing machine correct it is a multi tape and multi head turing machine and if you see we are we were having two types of turing machines which are the single head and multi head single head is nothing but you are not going to have these two just you are going to have only one head but with the multiple tapes but in this case we are having multiple tapes with the multiple heads here so this is the difference between multi heads multi tape turing machine and the single head multi tape turing machine so now let us see it is a device which has a 
finite control we have seen and some infinite number of tapes here we are having finite number of tapes correct one two and three we were having multiple but they are finite they are not infinite okay each tape is divided into cells where each cell can hold any symbol of the finite tape alphabet we have just now discussed my input tape is nothing but which can store the input string so this is here it is divided into cells if you see here this is divided into cells correct so this cells will store the input string input tape stores the input string in each and every cell here coming to the next point every language which is accepted by multi tape turing machine is recursively enumerable language so we have just now seen that turing machine is going to accept recursively enumerable languages for that purpose we have designed a the turing machine correct so the second point says the same thing which which is accepted by multi multi tape turing machine where this multi tape turing machine is again divided into two where which is having single head multi tape turing machine and multi head multi tape turing machine so now let us see here the multi tape turing machine has multiple tapes and multiple heads correct so this is one of the point and here you can also say that multi tape turing machine has multiple tapes and also single head correct now each tape is controlled by a separate head here because it is a multi tape right? multi tape multi head right every multi tape turing machine has an equivalent single tape turing machine if you see here coming to the diagram let us see here let us erase everything and here you are having 1 2 and 3 that means you are having multiple tapes this is a turing machine that means what it is a multi tape turing machine if there exist a multi tape turing machine then there will also exist a single tape turing machine for the same multi tape turing machine okay so अंत मन को मल्टी टेप ट्यूरिंग मशीन उंटे दीक्वलेंट सिंगि टेप ट्यूरिंग मशीन अभी एग्जिस्ट हो दट मीन वाट हिर् यू हाव यू आर् हाविंग अ फाइन ऐट कंट्रोल एंड दिस इज अंगल टेप विच इज इनफन टू बोथ दि एंड एंड देन दिस कंट्रोल फाइन ऐट कंट्रोल इज पॉइंटिंग टू वन आफ दि हेड ऑफ द इनपुट टेप विच इज नथिंग बट दिस इज सिंगल टेप ट्यूरिंग मशीन दट मीन If there exists a multi-tape Turing machine, then an equivalent single-tape Turing machine will also be existing here. So that is this point which we are going to specify here. Then now let us discuss what is this is the second one. This is the second one which is the non-deterministic Turing machine. So now let us see what is a non-deterministic Turing machine. If you carefully observe, or if you have watched the previous videos of the flat subject, then you will be coming across deterministic and non-deterministic terminology. So coming to here, non-deterministic is nothing but it is having several transitions. If you have several transitions, then it is non-deterministic Turing machine. If you have only single transition or a unique transition, then it is nothing but a deterministic Turing machine. So here. an input is accepted if there is at least one node of the tree see at least at least means you are having at least one two three that means one or more correct at least means one or more so if there is at least one node of the tree which is an accept configuration otherwise it is not accepted that means it should have at least one then only it is accepted if it is not having at least one then it is not accepted then it is rejected that's it any input string should have at least one node of tree that means at least one transition then it is accepted now if all branches of the computational tree halt that means what if you are during machine or if you are input string if you are processing your input string and if all the branches of your tree that means you are having a root node here that means you are starting with a transition function of something over here then you are having two ways from transition function this is the one way and this is the second way and here it has been halted that means there is no transition to continue over here then for this you are having another two transitions you can go anywhere in that in those transitions either this way or in that way now if this way again halts and this way also halts that means your computational tree halt on all inputs all the inputs have been halted 
The non-deterministic Turing machine is called a decider. Here it is called a decider. Halting means what? Either it may be a final state or it may be a non-final state. If first suppose if this is a final state, then you can say that at least one way was reaching to the final state correct so that is nothing but a decider that means it is deciding whether it is moving to the final state or to the non-final state that means our transition function should halt somewhere then only we can say that it is a decider and if for some input all branches are rejected then the input is also rejected see here halting is nothing it is not about rejecting or accepting it is about reaching to the final state or to the non-final state but there are some cases where it is rejected that means what you are not having any other transition over there then you can say that it is rejected so it may be accepted or it may be rejected in the accepted case your tree that means computational tree computational tree is nothing but the processing tree should halt somewhere either it may be a final state or the non-final state then it is known as a decider. Now, for a given state or input symbol has at least one choice to move. So, each choice has several choices of the path that it may follow for a given input string. That means what? Here, from this transition function you have been started. Now, you are having several ways. That means several choices you are having. So if you have several choices, there is a blind belief that if you are having several choices, then it is a non-deterministic one. Either it may be a Turing machine or if you are having several transitions for the finite automaton also, that is a non-deterministic finite automaton. Or if you have a several choices for pushdown automaton, then it is also called as non-deterministic pushdown automaton. So here, this is a Turing machine where you are having several transitions for the input string. So it is nothing but the non-deterministic Turing machine. Now, coming to the third one, that is third type of Turing machine, which is nothing but the semi-infinite Turing machine. From the name itself, if you carefully observe, semi-infinite. Semi-infinite means infinite is nothing but from both the ends it is completely infinite. That means from minus infinity and so on up to plus infinity, correct? This is the infinite. Completely both the ends it is infinite. But here it is semi-infinite. Semi-infinite means at least at the one end you should you should it should be a finite one. That means if you carefully observe there is an end here. But here we are still moving. It is not finite over here, but it is finite over here, which is nothing but semi infinite. That means your input tape should end at one end and it should be infinite at the other end. Then it is known as semi infinite tape Turing machine. Here, a Turing machine with a semi infinite tape has a left end, but not right end. There is no right hand over here, correct? There is no end over here at the right side. It is still moving on, moving on, moving till unlimited. But here at the left, there is an end here. So the left end is limited with an end marker. This is an end marker and here it is limited. This is nothing but the semi-infinite tape during machine. See here, it is a two track tape. You are having a upper track or a lower track. Now let us see what is the upper track and what is lower track over here. See here, upper track means it represents the cell to the right of the initial head. That means if your head is here, that means your head is here and it is representing the cells to the right side. That means there is an end over the left side and it is moving to the right side. That is known as upper track. Here, then coming to the lower track, it represents the cells to the left of the initial head position in the reverse order. That means Reverse of the upper track is nothing but the lower track. That is the first point. And the second point is, if you are having an initial head over here, then left of the initial head position, that means to the left side. This is nothing but our left side. The, both are the same semi-infinite Turing machines. But your head or your end is towards the left. That means you are having... Totally it is representing to the right side, it is the upper track. If it is representing completely to the left side, then it is the lower track. Coming to here, during machines with infinite 
semi infinite tape are equivalent to standard turing machines that means semi infinite tape are equivalent to standard turing machines okay this is one of the important point to remember about semi infinite tape turing machine now coming to two way infinite tape turing machine which is the fourth type right so infinite tape turing machine is again from the name itself you can say that it is infinite to the right side or it is infinite to the left side sorry it is not or it is infinite to the right side and also it is infinite to the left side that means it is a two way infinite tape so infinite tape of two way infinite tape turing machine is unbounded in both directions that is left and right see this is our input tape where it is divided into several cells which contains our input string and it is infinite to the left and also infinite to the right which is nothing but an infinite tape turing machine that's it which is very simple now with this two way infinite tape turing machine can be stimulated by one way turing machine correct that means it is if you see here semi infinite tape is equivalent to standard turing machine and also two way infinite tape is also equivalent to the standard turing machine now coming to the fifth one yeah this is the fourth one right so coming to the fifth type of the turing machine which is nothing but multi dimensional tape turing machine so it has multi from the name itself which is very very clear multi dimensional is nothing but left right up and down see here it is left right up and down it has a multi dimensional tape where the head can move see previously this is our input tape which is having a finite control and the, uh, we are pointing to one of the head here this head this head was moving either to the right side or to the left side till now in our turing machines correct but here in multi dimensional turing machine our head that means our finite control head is going to move in all the directions which is left right up and down so this is nothing but a multi dimensional tape turing machine which is the easiest one and here it can be stimulated that means the transition function of multi tape turing machine multi dimensional tape turing machine is nothing but q is the set of state q cross stack alphabet will tend to do q cross stack alphabet cross what is this left right up and down that means your directions previously same uh, for the turing machine same transition function we were having but our directions were only left and right but in the multi dimensional tape turing machine our directions are left right up and down this is about multi dimensional turing machine now there is a multi stack turing machine also which is nothing but a sixth one sixth type of turing machine is the multi stack turing machine if you carefully observe previously we have discussed about a single tag single stack turing machine correct which is also nothing but it is a push down automaton if you carefully observe push down automaton is having a stack over there that means a single stack but the same push down automaton if it is having a multi stack then it becomes multi stack turing machine now let me draw the diagram over here this is our input tape which is infinite to the both the ends and we are having a finite control over here which is pointing to any one of the input string input alphabet and we are having from the name itself we can say that we are having multiple stacks this is one stack let us draw another stack over here and we are having another stack over here see this finite control is having one stack two stack and three stack and so on that means you are having multi stack turing machine so this finite control it is pointing towards one of the input string of the input tape and it is having multiple stacks so if you are having a single stack then it is the push down automaton the same push down automaton if you are having multiple stacks then it becomes a multiple stack turing machine or a multi stack turing machine which again accepts 
recursively enumerable languages only but in the case of single stack push down automaton that was going to accept context to free languages this is the difference and you need to remember this difference correct so this is going to accept recursively enumerable languages so this is about multi stack turing machine now coming to the counter machines this is nothing but counter turing machines so still now we have used stack in order to store the elements correct stack is used to store the elements where your inputs uh, in order to corresponding to your input string we are going to store some of the alphabets in our stack either you will push it into the stack or you will pop it from the stack but coming to the counter machines here instead of using stacks we are going to use counters so instead of stack if you use counter then you will say that it is a counter machine which is very simple if you carefully listen instead of the stack which we have used if you use counters then that is known as a counter machine or counter turing machine also you can say till now in the in the turing machines which we have seen we were moving either to the left or to the right but in your counters you are going to either increment the value or you have you will decrement the value that's the just difference only two differences the first one is instead of stack you are going to use counters and instead of moving either to the left or to the right you are going to either increment or decrement the value so coming to the next point which is counter machine is again divided into two counters different types of counters which are two counters here the first one is non zero counter machine and the second one is zero counter machine so non zero counter machine and the zero counter machine are the two types of counter machines here we use multi stack in counter machines okay that means in the if in the place of multiple stacks you are going to use multiple counters that's just the difference between the counter machine and the multi stack turing machine and one of the main important thing is here we are not going to use any negative values that means all the negative values are not allowed here now see here language any language which is accepted by single counter it is a context free language and any language which is accepted by multiple counters it is a regular language these are the two important points which you need to remember if you see this context free languages we have learnt in the unit 3 correct so any language which is accepted by the single counter it is a context free language and any language which is accepted by the multiple counters it is a regular language so these two are the most important points and these seven different types of turing machines you may get it for the long answer questions from the unit 5 so thank you for watching the video